you guys so I got another new coach bag um, that one of my friends suggested uh, to me as a style that I might like and it's called the Alexandra style and I got it in a beautiful purple color so my friend found this bag for me on eBay and it was a pretty good deal so I thought it'd be a good way for me to try out this style to see if I like it so the reason that she said she likes it and she thought I would like it is that it has this crossbody strap, but it's actually like kind of stores in the bag. It has this, these straps across the bottom and you thread the crossbody strap through. So you can carry it on your shoulder So here it is as a shoulder bag. It's a decent sized strap drop. This is probably as short as a drop of, as I would ever want on a shoulder bag. So then when you want it to be a crossbody, you undo this clip and you can pull it through these straps. And then you loop it back around and clip it over here. So you have a long strap. Now for me, this is kind of short for crossbody wear. You can see it kind of rests on the top of my hip, and I would really like it to rest lower on my hip. But if I were shorter, maybe it would work better. And if I were somebody that liked a long shoulder drop, this would work nicely. So what my friend suggested to me is I might look for a small strap piece to put here so that I can make the drop a little longer for me. But that being said, <clears throat> I really love this color, of course, because you know about my purple obsession. And I love that it does have the shoulder strap option. I love that it has this outside pocket. So I can throw my phone in here or my keys if I don't want them to get lost. But one of the things I really liked about it was so simple. This really cool zipper pull. And it has all the uh, coach letter C's on it, but it's in a circle pattern. I thought that was really cool. I don't know if I'd ever seen that before. Um, it has this little fob here that I moved. This was on the zipper, which I thought was kind of strange when I got it. And then what I wanted to do today also was kind of show you that this bag came with some wear and then I was going to work on it and show you guys what I do when I get bags and they have wear. So you can see here the corner here and then she had disclosed that it had this spot. But I'm actually going to leave this alone because to me, rather than a stain, it looks almost like uh, they had something here that they tried to cover up with like some leather polish or something. So the last thing I want to do is make this look worse. So I'm just going to leave this alone. And you can see here, there's a little gouge in the leather. And then around the back somewhere around the buckles and just general kind of like gross filthy spots <laughs> but I'm okay with that because I don't mind cleaning bags up and spending a little time making them look nice if I can get them for a good deal so I will clean this one up first show you the inside so the inside is dark which is bad and good because it makes it hard to see your stuff in here. It's already dark enough being a purse. It doesn't need the help of a dark interior, but it hides, you know, stains or marks way more easily. So there is a little, some built-in pockets here. And this is kind of like a satin. So I'm sure it would repel stains very easily because it's kind of a slippery type of stuff and then there is a zip pocket on the other wall 
purse, but it's pretty basic inside. Another thing that I really like about it though is it really brings me to my smushy samba obsession. Because <laughs> look at this. I mean, fold it up, put it in your suitcase <laughs> when you go someplace, and then just unfold it when you get there. It's it's very smushy, but because it's this kind of um, pebbled leather, I mean, it'd be durable enough that I know I would do something terrible like that, like fold it up and put it in a suitcase. And I would think this is going to be fine when I get there. So I wouldn't worry about it. All right. So let's work on this bag a little bit. Where should I begin here? Let's start here. So I normally have a couple different products that I use when I clean up bags. This is what I normally use on pebbled leather. It is called Big Five. It is a spray, and I never spray it directly on the leather. I always spray it on a cloth, and I wipe the leather. And I'll do another video of a pebbled bag so you guys can see this in action. I just wanted to show it to you because it is normally what I would use on this bag if it came to me in a little bit better condition. Um, this um, is not guaranteed to not change the color of your bag. So a lot of you use Apple brand cleaner and conditioner, which is what I'm going to use on this bag today, which is guaranteed, especially for leather like Florentine that isn't completely finished, it's still porous, that it won't change the color of the leather. This is not like that. Do not put this on a Florentine bag or an Alto bag or any other kind of suede, nubuck, anything like that, because it will change the color. But for a pebbled leather bag, it's awesome because it's a cleaner and conditioner in one, and you don't have to buff it off. You just wipe it on and you're done. And so that's why I really like this product. But because this guy, this bag that came to me today has some kind of deep gouges and stuff, I'm gonna go to the Old Faithful Apple brand. So this is my cleaner, and this is the conditioner. And this stuff is very gentle. You can use it on pretty much any leather. I fixed up tons and tons of bags with this stuff. Um, and if you can use it on Florentine and, it, and it's fine, you can use it on anything. That's always my test of um, how gentle it is. Okay, so I'm gonna get a little rag here and just put some on, just a little dollop. And let's see, I'm just gonna wipe it, wipe it on. And the key to this stuff is I always just try to do it gently and I don't push too hard. Just kind of wipe it all over and try not to really um, scrub in certain areas because if you, if you start really scrubbing on a certain area, you may remove some of the color. So I know I just told you that this stuff is super gentle and it won't ruin anything, but you still have to use it wisely. So just, I always go and check my cloth and make sure, okay, I don't see any dye on here that matches my bag. So I must still be okay. And I just keep going. If I see any dye on here, I stop. Cause that means that the color is coming out of the leather and we don't want that. So. Just wipe it on everywhere and do a quick clean up. And then we will use the conditioner as the next step. Now normally I would let this cleaner dry in between before applying the conditioner. But since this is pebbled leather and I'm not that worried about babying it, I'm just gonna go right over it with the conditioner today so you guys can see. So already I can tell the difference. Kind of, look. Ah, I missed one spot here. So you can see all those weird like crusty things that were on this on the back side are gone. Okay. This already looks way better. Okay, so now let's do the conditioner. And as I said, I'm doing the abridged version of this, so 
normally you'd really take your time, go over every spot and make sure you get everywhere. So I'll go back and work more on this bag off camera. But, so let's see, let's pick a really, instance. Actually, this bag looks way better already, even with just the, um, cleaning it up. This poor thing. Ah, here we go. Here's a good spot. So here, you see that little gouge here? Okay, now I'm going to rub some conditioner here. And then you just be very gentle, rub it in. I'm going to go around the corners here, and I will go back and do the rest of the back, but I'm just trying to show you guys doing the back spots first. I'm going to put a little bit, I'm curious about this spot I said I wasn't going to touch, but now look what I'm doing. I'm touching it. This is how I always get myself in trouble, because I'm like, oh, well, some conditioner will help that. It can't hurt. And here's another gouge over here I'm going to fill in. Now, normally, I would go over the whole bag like this, just applying little little, um, little bits at a time and kind of rubbing it in. I usually do it in front of a bright window like this so we can really see what I'm doing. So, let's just take a look at how this looks. And it's helping a little bit. This bag has seen some action. All right. Now, normally what I would do is wait for this to dry, put on another coat if I felt like it was still dry or had some scuffs that I kind of needed to blend, and then let that dry. Once everything's dry, you use a cloth, a soft cloth. I steal these from my husband. He buys them to wash our cars, but they work great as buffers. They're just like an auto quality cleaning cloth, and you then you would just do this and buff. Go all over the bag and buff off that dry conditioner. And that's really where you get your shine from when you use this stuff. Now, without doing that, let me just show you what this looks like. So you remember that gouge I showed you? Take a look. Can you even see it anymore? It's right there. So it didn't get rid of it. It's still there, but it just darkened it a little bit and kind of helped it blend in with the surroundings. So that is how I fix up bags. And no, it does not make them perfect. They still have their beauty marks, but it helps, especially if you're not too worried about it being perfect, but you just want it to look nice. If you're going out with your friends or something and you know they're not going to be staring at your bag trying to find if you used cleaner and conditioner on it, but it just looks nice to them because you kind of fixed it up. So that is how I would do it. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish this bag off camera so I won't bore you for a half hour doing this in anal detail because that's how I will do it. But I just wanted to show you guys today. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, suggestions, Leave them below. I'm always happy to listen. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.